Hello, intro to cinema. My name is David Murphy. I'll be doing my final project on the film Blade Runner, directed by Ridley Scott, written by Hampton Fancher and David West Peoples, and also written by Philip K. Dick. Written by him because it was loosely uh, based on his novel Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep. The film stars Harrison Ford in the lead as Rick Deckard, Rutger Hauer as Roy Batty, Sean Young as Rachel, Edward James Almas as Gaff, and Daryl Hannah as Chris. Uh, the film, in my opinion, is one of Ridley Scott's greatest, um, if not up there with Alien, The Martian, one of his most recent works. Um, the film really shows Ridley Scott's perfectionism, his attention to detail when it comes to his style of shooting, Every little thing you see on screen is there for a reason. Um, nothing out of place. He was extremely perfectionist uh, when it came to making this film. Um, from my research, um, it was a very hard film to work on uh, because of his perfectionism. He would sometimes delay shooting for 13 hours, if not more, to get things correct, changing little things at the last minute. Um, wanting little things done that some people might not necessarily have felt that needed to be done. Um, he was very detail oriented um, with things. Early in his career, he was actually a commercial director. He actually directed the um, 1984 was the title of the commercial, the um, Apple commercial that was really big. That played during the Super Bowl in the early 80s. It was titled 1984, but he actually directed that. And he just kind of got his attention to detail with that because he was doing such short segments for commercials, so everything had to be perfect. Um, but again, because of that, it, caused, it did cause some problems on set. Harrison Ford stated it was one of the most difficult movies he had ever made. And But in the end, it showed that Ridley Scott's attention to detail was really what the film needed, and it, in my eyes, is one of the most perfect science fiction movies um, ever made. Um, it's funny because this film harks back to one of the films earlier in the semester that we actually went over was Metropolis. Um, has numerous similarities to the production design. They actually use still pictures um, of Metropolis to try to make the production equal to that or to gain inspiration from Metropolis. Um, of course, you know, Metropolis was directed by Fritz Lang. Um, Fritz Lang was also a uh, inventor of a certain camera technique and a certain technique that put, um, I guess for lack of a better term, shining eyes. Um, as you see throughout the film, Fritz Lang is actually the one who developed that technique by basically shining a light off of a half mirror at 45 degrees, I believe, um, into the actor's field of vision, and it produced this kind of cat eye-like um, look that uh, really Scott liked to use to try to kind of differentiate between the characters. Um, of course, within Blade Runner, the characters are really divided into um, Harrison Ford, his character, Rick Deckard, is what we consider a Blade Runner. He searches for what we call replicants, which are uh, basically androids that were created in order to work in off-world colonies as labor. Um, just a quick rundown. Some of these replicants make it back to Earth, and it is Harrison Ford's job to hunt them down. Um, so themes of this movie really um it is a film noir it is uh a crime film gritty dirty dark um sometimes it's very uh brooding you just never really know what to expect um with what's going to go on in the film um it also delves into technology what is technology what kind of technology um should we use as a society to help us um, you know, should we use different types of machines to help us in different ways? And um, Harrison Ford's character, 
in the film states at some point in time that the uh, machines in the film, they're either here to help us or hurt us, and that kind of is what differenti differentiates a good machine from another. But these machines we're talking about are replicants, are androids, and they are meant to look like humans. Um, one way he's able to determine if they're human or not is a thought um, comp, I hope I'm saying that right if I remember, uh, test which was actually created by Alan Turning, which there was a movie written and produced about him called The Imitation Game. Um, check that one out. That's a good one. Um, that has Benedict Cumberbatch in it, if I do believe correct. Um, but it's just a way to differentiate between a human and a machine. And the whole premise is, can a machine really be human? So that's another theme, is another big theme throughout the entire movie is humanity. Um, what is humanity? What defines humanity? Um, what and how can, can a machine be human in any particular way? And that is a major theme um, throughout the film as well. Um, the environment is also a big theme. The type of environment that this movie takes place in is a sprawling urban. Um, clearly in the future there's ads everywhere. You're inundated with these different ads from different companies. And I, I don't know if I'm not entirely sure, but I think this is one of the first films with product placement of this magnitude. Um, where you had everything from Coca-Cola to Atari to Atari going old there. Um, to I think maybe JVC, a bunch of other companies were involved and a lot of licensing, I guess, for the film. Um, but um, the movie itself is, in my eyes, um, one of the best. I think it belongs on numerous short lists as far as one of the greatest films ever. Its sequel, Blade Runner 2049, is uh, definitely up there with it, which I think the sequel actually answers a few questions from this film. Um, one of the main questions, um, besides the themes, one of the main questions um, that kind of lets the audience decide is the main character, Rick Deckard, is he a, is he a replicant? Is he what he is actually hunting as a bird? Um, and you never really get the answer to that question. Um, you do in certain versions. Um, you get more hints in certain versions of the film. There were seven different versions of the film um, that were produced. The last one was the final cut, I think, which is the one I've always watched. Um, it was released like in 2007, and it actually delves in a little bit deeper and lets you kind of, it kind of pu pushes you towards a certain answer of is Deckard a replic replicant and is he, you know, what he is searching for, basically. So, but I'll leave you with one of the best quotes of all time, I think, in movies. Um, one of the most perfect quotes in a movie, and it's spoken by Rucker Howard at the end, right before his character, Roy Batty, actually meets his demise. And it is, all those moments will be lost in time like tears in a movie. Thanks.